Hello, welcome back to the MDLSA qualifiers. This is Gorilla's Pride versus Infamous in the playoffs. That's right, but loser, if this game is going to go home, the winner, well, they're going to go on and uh, they will face Mad Kings in the uh, round three match. So uh, everything to play for here. Loser goes home, so it's not, not any kind of a softy group stage match anymore. No, 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 we, we've got the big boy pants on now. The real games are coming out to play. And things change. Things change when you know that if you lose, you're getting knocked out. You know, you know what chances. This is it. You, you gotta, you gotta draft to your best. You gotta play to your best. You'll see them play to their strengths. You'll also see them trying to pull out the strategies. Everything is on the line. Dire team pick. These SA teams. I mean, there's a lot of them, and these qualifiers really are everything. Like they, they pour everything they've got into there. Like they try their hardest. They generally want to get to tournaments like they genuinely do and uh i mean they they one of them's gonna make it and who's it gonna be and also remaining. with this qualifier there's no pain i think pain got invited Five seconds so it's gonna be between mad kings g pride infamous sg t show and lucini so plenty of opportunity here it's pretty even playing ground i think if you're looking for an exciting qualifier to follow it's gonna be unpredictable. Radiant this is probably one of the best ones. Has arrived. There comes the Dark Willow from Infamous. So, let's look at these drafts so far. G Pride, they're gonna go for Sand King, Rubik, and Abaddon. Meanwhile, Infamous, they're gonna pick up the Bane, Beastmaster, and the Dark Willow. On paper, I think Infamous are the favorite team. They have Pepita, they have Matthew, they have Excel Goods. So these, these are some, some very good players. Uh, BNN's been doing pretty well as well. I don't know who Control X and Control V are. Uh, there might be a stand. G Pride, they're all Hearing Force. And uh, I mean, obviously, they have Masaku. Um, they also have uh, Moose as well. He's a very, very good drafter and a great player as well. So. Um, you know, pretty even matchup, I would say, but I would say I, I would give the advantage to Infamous, but let's see how it goes. So, um, with this draft, so we've got an SK and Rubik to start things off. This is such a popular combo recently. I can't stress that enough. We have seen so much Rubik's anking. And, uh, I mean, it's just it's just a fantastic setup. A little bit greedy. It has to be said, it's a little bit greedy. You got the Rubik as a 5 support, which is uh, never really um, very disciplined. You, you know, you, you're always buying enough a lot there, and uh, because Rubik needs needs items, he need, he need, he needs a bit. He he doesn't he doesn't do well in that really five hard five position. You know, if he if he's not able to make use of spell steal, then uh, he's not a fantastic hero. But he he's great for stealing spells off Bane and Beastmaster, and now Dark Will. So there's there's three fantastic heroes to steal spells from. Maybe they're still gonna pick up a five actually. There's a Terrorblade coming out from G Pride. This is uh usually you want to pick the Terrorblade as a 5, but I think it's fine as a 4 as well. And the OD is in response to that straight away. OD can just make light work of the the Terrorblade illusions and uh generally does a lot of damage. High damage output here. It doesn't care about Terrorblade's insane armor, which is really important as well. And I've just realized how similar Terrorblade and Abaddon's feet were. Ten seconds remaining. Both have spectral flaming feet, so there you go. Five seconds. Can't say you didn't learn anything Ten seconds remaining. Banning out the void on the side of G Pride, but I can kind of get that. Like they they, they do very well uh, with the void. Remaining. Uh, giving OD that time to just hit people and grab it, get his in up before he drops the hammer. Dark Willow really does well with setups as well. All of her spells take a long time to come into effect, so except for Bedlam, it's OP. That's the thing, like with Dark Willow, if you if you remove Bedlam, she would actually be still be a good hero. I think. I don't know, maybe Terrorize is just a little bit weak. As an ultimate on its own. I don't know. Still think though, like her, her solo kill potential is way too much. She just needs some levels and then she's fine, so. Only three seconds reserve time left on G Pride though. That's pretty big. Dire like they they pick. this if this last pick, if I were infamous now, I would genuinely pick a pretty weird last pick, which makes the uh, gorillas reconsider everything. Um just to take advantage of that three second reserve time, because they're only gonna have fifteen seconds to pick a hero. So you gotta if you pick out something crazy, 
long as you, as long as you know it fits into your draft, as long as you know you can play it, then uh, G Pride you could really throw them a curveball, cause them cause them to pick something stupid and then mess up their draft. It's a crazy strategy, but I think Five it would work. Again, we're all, we're all about that. We're all about those crazy strategies. You know, you, you don't you don't get to be the very best without uh, throwing some curveballs here and there. And infamous, they've left themselves plenty of reserve time. They're mocking G Pride right now. They're just like, oh, look at this, forty seconds reserve time. We're just gonna take our time, go and make some cocktails, cook up some mojitos, sip them at our desk. Beautiful. Oh, G Pride. Oh, you're still waiting. Oh, sorry. We'll let you get on with your three seconds reserve time in just a second as we we get down to the fifteen second mark. Still going. Just bring our masseuses in. Get get some get some back massages in before this game starts. You oh no you've only got three seconds you can't have that sorry sorry otherwise you could but because you've only got three seconds you can't. And here we go it is going to be the Monkey King coming out from Infamous so uh, that doesn't surprise me actually this is like an SA favorite they love the Monkey King a lot of regions value it but I think SA the most Monkey King and Bane it's like a classic SA game. G Pride what do they pick that's the Monkey King? They don't have the void they banned out themselves. I almost feel like seconds. the Void was in preparation for the, uh, the Monkey King pick, but it's on the wrong side, and they're gonna pick the Broom Mother! So what was he even thinking about that? The best thing you could do Infamous is pick something weird really fast, but honestly, they just go for the Monkey King, the solid pick, which really rounds off their lineup quite nicely. They needed that damage in here. They really, like, I mean, OD does do damage later on, but early on they want someone who can ruin a lane, get some kills, and, and get things going. The only thing is, uh, Monkey King doesn't have... actually, yeah, yeah. No, Monkey King is pretty good versus Brood in the right situations. Feel like you want to level up Boundless Strike versus Brood Mother so you can just jump on all those creeps, but then again, she can hear them and her movement speed so quick that she will just run away from where you're Boundless Striking in, so maybe that's not a fantastic. But they got Beastmaster on Infamous. They got Beastmaster, Monkey King, and Dark Willow. Like, uh, maybe not so much Dark Willow, but the Beastmaster and the Monkey King do a really, really good job of dealing with the uh, spiders. I'm wondering where this broodmother's gonna lane. It must be mid versus the OD. That's the only way place you can you can lane this. The brood. What does she have? Yep, two shed tango. She's going mid for sure, for definite. Um, so we'll have <laughs> Terrorblade in the safe lane. Yep, broodmother in the uh. But that's. I wonder if they're gonna put the broodmother the the beastmaster mid. He's got two shed tango as well. Ooh. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. So, Peter in the off lane. OD up at top. Beastmaster mid to get that brood by the matchup. I like this. I like this a lot. It's very smart. Very high IQ plays from Infamous right now. They they they've read these lanes perfectly. I think we will have to see where they actually go. Shut up, OD. I'm trying to talk. I'm laughing at me. Terrorblade in the safe lane. Um. Versus the, I'm guessing it's gonna be a Monkey King and a Bane, or maybe the Dark Willow will come. Yeah, the Dark Willow gives such good harass that you might want it down there just to be kind of uh, fight off versus a Rubick. That might work really well for you, because your Bane he doesn't fight so well, and you can just bring him top and then he can uh, enfeeble the Abaddon, and the Abaddon can't really do anything, or you get Nightmare or Brain Sap and just kind of fight with him. Both are good options actually. Especially like the Enfeeble though, because then he, you know, even though he's got that, that shield, can't really last hit, so that's pretty fun. I don't know, plenty of options. And oh, uh, SK, will we, G Pride seem to get the opposite idea of what we want to do. Uh, rather than having a player reconnect, they've actually had another player disconnect, so we'll give them a minute to figure that one out and get both their players back in the game, hopefully. But uh, I mean, this is SA. If you're not expecting pauses, then you should probably go to a different region, because. Uh, um, I actually have notes. I'm not even kidding you. I have notes when I to, like. I don't try to trash the region. Like it, it just happens. It's just, it's just a thing. You know, it's, it's not something I'm, I'm upset about. It just gives you time to talk about the game. It's the players' time to get in the mindset. You know, get get into things. Um, you know, like a list of things to talk about. We could talk about cosmetics. We're not going to talk about cosmetics. Although, oh, they do have my favorite courier. Damn it, we are going to talk about cosmetics because they've got the Dolphrat and uh, what's this other thing? Dolphrat and Cagente. I can't remember the, the, the wizard's name. I think it's like... Shitty wizard backwards. Which is shitty wizard like mixed up. But anyway, yeah, it's it's a fantastic career. Look at it go. It's fantastic. I've got that one. Uh, what the hell? Outer L Sand. I don't know what that means. There were any... Any translators in the chat? What does L Sand mean? I don't know. 
It might be El Sand King, I don't know. But we have a smoke coming out of the base from G-Pride. Let's see what they try and make of this. Are they going to try and go for first blood somewhere? They've got the Rubik lift and they've got the Sand King stun, so that could be enough to get them that blood. Get the blood on the grass. Hmm, get the blood on the grass, that's a good saying. I should try that one more often. Well, uh... Loku, he just wants to get this uh, ban this observer wall down. It's such a value bounty wall. Uh, it's highly, well, it did. gives you rune vision, gives you high ground vision, it gives you rotation vision from this area here. And if everybody's you know stacking or whatever, then they they'll come in from that direction. You can catch them out. Uh, meanwhile, down at the bottom, we have this courier kind of just doing laps here, but it's not actually a courier surprise. It's a monkey king. Um, didn't expect that, did you? We're majestic courier. Best courier in the game. It just is. It's so sick. It's well made, pretty, it's got particle effects. If you don't like that courier then. You don't know art. And uh Moose kinda hanging around. Uh, they didn't they didn't really manage to find anything with that smoke. I don't think they're actually going for a kill. They just wanted to get that uh, middle lane ward down. Monkey King though is going really far forward here. He's, he's on a little adventure. I wonder if he's gonna pull a creep wave or even go for the courier snipe. The fabled courier snipe, it's out of the base if he wants to try for it. No, he will not. That's a Benja special. As uh, Benjus always goes to those courier snipes. The wages of fear. So, Masoku, he's uh, gonna be coming down to this bottom lane. They've actually seemed to be swapping things up because they managed to see. No, I did miss this, but they managed to see the OD at top, I think. And uh, I'm not gonna pull the wave. This is interesting. So, they're gonna bring the terror blade up top. I don't think they've. Yep, now we got the Beastmaster versus. Uh, Brood at mid, and Beastmaster's gonna have a great time here. But I'll swap with that inner beast just to help him CS, and he'll soon go into the uh, uh, the axes, and that'll help him a lot versus the uh, the spawn spiderlings when Brood gets that. Uh, meanwhile, top, things are, things are pretty chill at top lane. Like, I, don't, I don't think there's. I say that now, it's probably gonna kick off soon. And there goes the metamorphosis and the stun as well onto the Monkey King. This is a lot of damage. The pizza, what do you do against this? He's just going to back out. They're not wanting to chase any further than that. But the Metamorphosis is going to give them such a good early game advantage in this lane. Sell good and moves just kind of fighting off between each other. Uh, meanwhile, the bottom lane. Masoku and a Control X. Oh, they're going to lift him back, throw him down, but Matthew's in the wings. Waiting. He hasn't leveled anything up yet, but meanwhile, Terra Blade has come down. Uh, this is interesting, and uh, they'll send the Abaddon up. So they want to get the Abaddon versus the, uh, the Monkey King. That's an interesting lineup. You are never going to succeed. Sorry about that silence. I had, a, I had a sneeze coming on, and you know, when you have a sneeze coming on, you can't quite get it out, and you try and do everything you can. You sniff some pepper. I've always got, I've got, I've always got a little pepper sachet in my pocket ready in case I need to sneeze, but it didn't work this time. Just ripping open that sachet and sniffing it up. Now, it's terrible. He's going to take a bit of harass here at bottom, but he doesn't care. He's, he's just like, yeah, whatever. I reflect and kind of accept what's happening to me. But um, it's a lot of damage. You missed the attack speed from the Dark Willow, but now your armor, your damage is reduced by 20. And the lift as well. And now they're actually going aggressively onto the Dark Willow here, and look at all of this armor on the Terror Blade. Any other hero would die in this situation, but Terror Blade doesn't care. He doesn't care at all. The first blood goes away off the Terror Blade. This hero is broken, if you ask me. 11 armor for level 2. It's just ridiculous. It's just so stupid. I mean, I know that he's got fantastic uh, agility gain, but even though his starting armor is just too high, if you ask me, it's too high. I mean, he's only getting 4.5 armor from his starting agility anyway, so... Someone call the OS frog, please. So in the mid lane, uh, Beastmaster's actually being chased down by the Brood here, but I'm pretty sure she can't really do anything. She's going for that Soul Ring on the Beastmaster, and I really like that pickup. That's gonna just mean he can spam those axes and clear out those Spiderlings, which is gonna give him a load of farm in this game. Let's need to be careful though, because uh, Chris Brown can always just run at him and kill him if he doesn't have those axes available to clear out those creeps. Of which he misses on the spiders. That's a big miss. That's a big, big miss. Uh, Pizza gets the Jingo off. Don't think he can find enough damage. Oh, he's going for the jump. And one more hit might do the job. Nope, he gets the shield off. 
Batten says no. Pops, pops the south. Back we go. Meanwhile, a bit of action in the bottom lane as the uh, Bramble Maze is put down, but uh, people are okay. Beastmaster in the mid, being jumped on by Moose, and now being chased under the tower by Chris Brown. Chris Brown, does he have this Swarm Spidelings available? Yes, he's just got that Soul Ring off cooldown. He can pop it, but actually dies to the tower! Oh no, at least the Beastmaster falls, but that was a big mistake. Didn't realize the tower was attacking him, and I actually ended up dropping there. Oh sure, did he get right click off? I don't, I don't know, I didn't see that quite. Well, back into the middle lane we go. I feel like Vienna needs to be a little bit more careful with his axes. He seems to be just using it to get last hits right now, and uh, really you want to use it on these spiders. There we go, getting one off on the spiders, but um, I'm willing the other one immediately afterwards to follow to actually get the kill on any of them. And, uh, oh, can he get it? Oh, he doesn't actually kill them. I think he needs to get both axes through on them or something, I don't know, but maybe he just needs more level than axes. We're already level 3, though. Game pool's level 4. And will never have that screen. Meanwhile, Pepita, farming in an unusual but safe position. Not sure. No, I think uh, bad enough to pull the creep around. Felt like he needed another level. And this has become kind of commonplace now. Whilst taking them at the beginning isn't that common anymore. Um, just going in and uh, stealing the creeps and bringing them to you. It's uh, quite common when you just need to grab a level or two to survive in your lane. It's smart. Terribly having an okay time here in the bottom lane, but actually the, the OD is doing really, really well. Everybody's doing well on last hit, so like, no one's really falling that far behind. In fact, the terrible is doing the worst out of everybody, which is interesting. Well, and the Abaddon. Well, yeah, you got three three Dire Heroes doing very well, and two Radiant Heroes doing very well. Poor old Abaddon is just not having a good time versus this uh, this Monkey King. And this is the lane they wanted as well, so quite surprising, but Beast is having a great time. He doesn't even have a support. Force it down at bottom and showing how he has a decent game. And look at this damage onto the Terrorblade. Can they bring him down? They're going to get the stun out. The lift from the Rubik going to stun all three of them up for a while. Now's that Shadow Realm. Can they find the last tick of damage onto K1? It does look like he's going to get away though. Rubik slapped up. Doku in trouble. Getting blocked up. Those reflections coming in. Can they kill Matthew? That is the question. Now that stun is going to come out onto K1. Matthew escapes. And uh be okay for infamous one well, at mid bn and he's got these uh these blades of attack queued up uh throw, throws the uh uh yeah they get him they get the bottom of the strike through that's easy enough to get a kill dyer's top tower is under attack Down in the bottom lane. Terrorblade. Ooh, they're actually gonna find the Bane here, throwing him back with a metamorphosis damage. Excel goods going down very fast. Does manage to find his way through the Bramble Maze. And um will maybe go down. No, nope, neither of them's gonna drop now. And actually Masoka, the only one to die so far on the axes. Nearly take down K1. A couple more hits from Control X will be needed. Tries to get the kill on Matthew, but can't quite do it. And does drop the Terrorblade. Two heroes dead. The Sanking and the Terrorblade hit the deck. And uh Infamous going to be very happy with this little trade here. The first rotation from BNN uh, with wonderful access through to take care of uh, business. Uh, he even screwed himself that last hit as well. But mid, the pizza could be in trouble. No, nope, TP's in. Chris Brown going to be forced back. Diving very deep, as you should do as a broodmother. When you play in brood, you don't let anybody tell you what to do. You do your own thing. MK moving back into this middle lane, and with this Beastmaster, I think they just want to get some damage onto these spiders, but he didn't quite land there. Wild Axis, though, I think they do like max amp per stack. This will come in handy. Oh, no, damage amp per stack. So there's 12 extra damage for every piece of damage you take from Beastmaster. I think. Good luck. Yeah. Octarine and Radiance on Beastmaster OP. I wonder if Radiance actually works. But like, if it's every stack, then surely Radiance should do 
like 1200 damage per second. They're gonna use a shout onto the brood here. With the illusions, they're actually able to do so much damage. And that's the extra stack damage. That that's those exits coming through, and he's gonna have them in one and get them. Got him. That's your shout used, and that's a kill for BNN. Should be happy with that. Meanwhile, the beater in the top lane. Um, has he gone down yet? He hasn't gone down. He's having a fantastic time. Um, 58 CS. Obviously, uh, BNN sitting on a bunch more just because of these creeps uh, in the middle lane. And uh, we'll throw it over to Networth, but that is reflected just because he found a kill. He's found two kills now, I think. Um, yeah, on that beast master, he did die once. When did he die? I don't know when he died. Him, yeah, they ganked him in mid, but he still got the kill onto the brood. I remember. My short term memory does come into play there, but uh, luckily I managed to uh, find it back. X is gonna fly. Now these spiders are getting to a higher level, it's harder for a BNN to pull them off, I think. Um, but uh, more than happy to just use the axes for farming. Meanwhile, at the top, Pepita trying to find the Abaddon, but Abaddon has the ultimate, so I think he just wants the Jingu here and uh, trigger off the Abaddon ulti. There you go. Final strike, he's happy with that. Middle lane, BNN once again, just throwing out all of these axes and again finding a bunch of spiders with him. Chris Brown can't dive here. Actually, he could have, but he's got the two mangoes. <laughs> he's more than happy to mango up if he gets the uh, spiders in return. Like, that is... Well, you get, like... He gets 100 gold, basically, from these uh, spiders and the, uh, the wild axes are worth. K1, I mean, he is going to be the, the important factor in this game, right? Like, Terrorblade, whenever you draft a Terrorblade, you need him to uh, have a decent game, and obviously, like any carry. But he, doesn't, he doesn't play comeback particularly well, but what he does do is supply, provide a ton of damage when you use that Metamorphosis. I mean, absolute ton. So let's see what he can do onto Pepita here. They're waiting for Pepita to go aggressive. They lose patience, they run on him, they do get the lift available, and there's a metamorphosis coming out, the bounder strike to try and buy himself a bit of time. He needs to not get hit for three seconds to be able to get to these trees. Two, one, he's gonna make it to the tree line, and he does get himself out of there with the immediate bounder strike. Sorry, uh Primal Spring, and then TP from the tree, and he is out of there. Meanwhile, the bottom lane, they actually found a kill on some no middle lane, sorry, the, the spider went aggressive. Yeah. No one except Beastmaster can go to this lane, otherwise they're gonna die. Maybe Monkey King could do it. Yeah, he's, he's got the uh, Claymore actually, so he'll be fine in this middle lane. I mean, we're at the top, the damage is coming out inside tier 1. A1 will deal with it. Bottom. Moose. Do they have a sight for him? They do not, and I'm sure Moose already checked all of that. Uh, meanwhile, Chris Brown actually goes down the middle lane, but we'll keep our eyes to bottom as they're trying to do the damage to this tower, and BNN with his 3 levels into Inner Beast. Really making short work of this tower, especially with that boar. Uh, he's going to come in and tank for a bit, but in comes the Baden, looking to try and defend maybe. Now they did kill the Broodmother in mid was what I was about to point out with the uh, Dark Willow and the uh, the Monkey King. The bottom lane, they have managed to take this tower. Be good. Um, quick pause for the lag. You know, it happens. All good. But yeah, middle lane, looks like they used the, uh, the Boundless Strike and just the stun from Dark Willow. Maybe the Bramble Maze. Um, to just lock down that, uh, yeah, Bramble Maze on cooldown. It's got like a, like, 25 second cooldown, so yeah, that was at mid lane to kill the Brood. With a Bramble Strike set it up, I'm sure they get that up, and now comes the Bedlam, but the Illusions are able to absorb a lot of its damage. Matthew will be forced to get out, doesn't really want to drop the Shadow Realm for the, the Saku. He can get that kill with a level 1 Shadow Realm, it's just to dodge projectiles. And uh, K1 realizes that there's a Monkey King, does still get the Bounder Strike off, so he has got two, three levels in that. Actually, pop of the Wukongs with the Bounder Strike, they are able to find this kill. Oh well, Monkey King. Making things happen now in this middle lane. Chris Brown and Moose just forcing people out. At bottom, like, this OD, no chill, no chill on this guy. So, let's take a step back. Let, let, let's think about how this game is going, right? You got your three cores on the side of Infamous up here doing very, very well. 3.4k, 6.4k, 6.4k, and 6. Point, sorry, 5.7k. The next lowest is the Broodmother, 5.5k. 
What do you do on the side of infamous? Do you hump this brood map? Do you keep the terror blade pinned down, or do you just try and pr apply pressure equally across the map? I think keep hunting this terror blade. Brood, she's gonna hit her all good. That can be annoying, but you've got the four stuff on the dial one. You're already you're, like, you're already prepared for this. I don't think it's that much of an issue. And look at Pepita just going crazy right now. Jesus, he's got the shadow blade. So his main job is just to find kills. Well, K1, I mean, he's forced into fighting here. Well, Chris Brown, I mean, he's got some spiders. Not sure what he can do to this fight, though. In comes for Peter, looking to find the spiderlings, I think, and he will trigger off that ultimate. And actually hits him one more time to get the Jingu, but now the fear comes out, forcing them back. The shout is on to the Broodmother, it looks like. Yes, it will, but she wants that ulti off, able to come back, and Matthew will be taken out. Infamous, the spider is not going well for them right now. Chris Brown chasing down. What can he find? Selgood may be in trouble. Uses that brain sap, but immediately getting nuked down. One more hit. Chris Brown finds it, but look at the deep dive. But now the Burrow Strike comes out onto the Monkey King. K1 trying to do the damage. BNN has to be careful. The spider's chasing him. Meanwhile, the Burrow Strike found the strike. So walk him out. And now the Sanity's Eclipse from Control X just to finish off that Sand King. So G Pride will just kind of hang out a bit. Um, they lose two. Uh, maybe the brood driving a little bit too deep there. I'm, I'm not sure she had the orchid before, but because she got those kills, she managed to find her orchid, and that's a massive timing they've just hit. Top tower is under attack. I don't know. Well, Bob, Peter will come into contact with the bad, and he does use the boundless strike. And, uh, oh, weird jump there from Peter. Um, might have been missed, but I'm not sure. He was just trying to jump on him really, really quickly and didn't uh, kind of underestimate how quickly he had in most of these phase boots. He's also got the Helm of the Dominator. Um, he's got this little uh, Centaur creep. Attack. Peter just using that Shadow Blade. Is he actually going to go on to Chris Brown here? This seems crazy. Soku could be a more realistic option. Yes, he will. Battle Strike. Oh my god. That's a lot of damage. Peter, well, he can't find the jump away, but doesn't really need it. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, a center will stomp, but the tower's already dead. Beastmaster, we got a creep battle going on. Uh, but of course, the Beastmaster's win. He's got more. More creeps, more money. Meanwhile, at top, K1 is doing a very good job of just kind of farming up, ignoring everything, but, well, not a very good job. He's far behind, but. Oh no, Peter. He can solo get this kill if he plays it right. And Terrorblade hasn't leveled up something that's so greedy. That is so greedy, but he's only level 8. Holy crap, this Terrorblade is low. Jesus. A level 8 Terrorblade? I mean, he's got, he's got a bad amount of gold, but I didn't realize what's happened to his levels. Jesus, he must have just been dying every time. He, hasn't, he obviously hasn't been there for the fight. Shout out onto Chris Brown. Um, Pepita, there's so many spiders here if you can find them, but uh, unfortunately they, they are scuttling around all over the place. It's very difficult to find, and they will get the battle strike onto Chris Brown. And uh, Rubik does uh, Astral himself. But it really do a whole lot. Last. And oof, this is one farm Dark Grillo. She's found herself a Vela Discord. This is problematic. Arrowblade, when he hits level 9, is he going to get a point into Sunder? No, he's not. He puts it in the conjure image. So greedy, but I guess you kind of need to be at this stage of the game. If they gank you, I don't think you're going to get a chance to use the uh, Sunder anyway, I guess. But still, I, I would just take the money. Okay. Meanwhile, Pepita is just going absolutely crazy on this Monkey King. Really kind of making G Pride look like amateurs here. Um, just roaming around the map, finding whatever he wants. He's got the solo crush, which just um, amplifies his damage so much. But Peter, it's doing work. Okay, so G Pride, their way back into this game is clearly on the back of this Terror Blade, and he just has no items and no levels right now. Is there a way to get this Terror Blade back into this game? I think you need to take a fight. I think you need to go Smokers 5, see if you can catch out one of these cores. Maybe try and get the kill onto the Terror Blade? That's maybe a little bit too greedy. I think you just want to kill them full stop. But you don't want to do that whilst Terrorblade doesn't have Sunder. Going for an attack without a Sunder on your Terrorblade is just really, really dangerous because you can just nuke that guy down and he's going to have issues. Just around. He's got the Orchid. And Abdalion. You don't have that BKB. Um, might be a while before he gets that, but he's, he's, got, he's got the kill potential available. 
And like, they, they don't necessarily need the Broodmother just to stay within her webs. If they go for a smoke with the Brood, they can make full use of this Orchid. She can always place a web, like, once the gang starts, but they need to use this only net worth they have, and talking of which, Pepita is going to drop here. There's no way uh, with the Astral there yet, unless he's done. Um, I question the Astral Steel, but it was really, really good there. Like, if Masuki takes a couple more hits there, and Monkey King gets... I mean, the Boundless Strike would have been massive, right? Like, four heroes there, Boundless Strike, Rampage, easy game. Maybe not that bad, but yeah, that was a huge kill. I think uh, just Monkey King getting careless in the end, or underestimating the Astral. Ramble May is used to they're going for Roche, and uh, this might not be a half bad idea. I don't know. It's a brawls you play, but they need a ballsy play. They're coming in on Rush Down. Look at how quickly it's falling. This is the uh, Dalian, Terror Blade. It's a big call. Let's see what they can do. In comes the ultimate from Matthew, though. Doesn't quite catch out the brood, though. She's playing inside the pit. Roshan getting really low. Roshan is going to drop. Who's going to get it? It is actually K1 who gets it, but immediately falls down to the hurricane bike. Meanwhile, Excel good in the middle of it. All taking a lot of damage, but those illusions tear apart Masoku as well. Down goes the Abaddon. Meanwhile, in the vertical fight, man, this Terra Blade's back alive, but um, not for much longer. Nice, nice axes coming through just to uh, secure that kill. And uh, I believe... I mean, G Pride don't GG out just yet. They've still got a small chance in this game, but it's, it's it's grim. It's grim as hell. Let's see what they can do. It's the best of three series. I might be tempted to just call it personally and just be like, hey, let's let's go, you know? But, you know, one lane of racks, it's not that bad. 15k advantage at 19 minutes. Okay, that's kind of bad. They did get the Roshan, though. you got to give them that. They went for Roshan, they took Roshan, they just weren't prepared for the consequences. I think that's a, that's a fair statement to make, and now they're going to lose Rex after just taking Roche. So. Uh, you know, sometimes it happens. Um, Hurricane Pie comes through, but the Astral from Rubik is there. He really likes this spell, and it is really, really good versus their team. We've seen. Infamous, they're looking for shrines now. I guess some shrine gaming going on. No, not MK, he's, he's all about the creeps. Oh, never mind, he just wanted a shrine. I say, he's most of their physical damage. Like, the OD just hits, like... 153. Well, they hit a similar, but Monkey King hits much faster, so. OD has that pure damage, though. That's a big difference. On heroes, not on building. So, Hurricane, Blink Dagger, on the OD. He's a, he's a hero with very little mobility. These, these items are very important for him. And we've seen him use a Hurricane Bite to completely blot this Terrorblade every single time, which is really useful. Um, it's so good. Merging to finally Rubik here, and that was just the most boring kill. <laughs> Literally OD just walks past it. Oh, a kill. Boop. Baden trying to run away. They are chasing pretty hard right now, and in they drop. And uh, I reckon the OD's going to keep attacking him through this LT. Yes, he is. OD. 32, 36, 40, 44, 48, 52. 56, 60, more, give me more. Shame. And the end that he finished off with that. 60 solid intelligence, Sanity's Eclipse is going to kill someone. Top level analysis there, but yeah, Sanity's Eclipse is going to blow someone up. You can also go high ground with the 60 intelligence. Like this, this is, this isn't just uh, 162 damage from a total. Jesus Christ, I mean, Terrorblade's in is. Terrorblade's split in is 40. ODs is. Uh, 160. That's a difference of 120. Nazi's Eclipse does 9 times 120. Come on, just. He's not even gonna use it. This game's over. GG is cool, thank god. Jesus Christ, he just died, that was a double damage rune. Oh D, you can one hit him, he can one hit him. Not quite, not quite. Oh man, okay, infamous. Well, it's back to the drawing board for G Pride there. Um, game number two, coming up shortly, but I mean there's, there's no analysis to be done here. Um, the Roshan was a good call, you gotta give him that, the Roshan was a great call. 
Unfortunately, the Terrorblade just had no space. I mean, level level eight by like what sixteen minutes or whatever it was. That was just not not possible to win the game uh, from that situation. And yeah, the graph was. I think this was a Roshan jump. Oop. But uh, yeah, yeah, the uh, kind of a small dent in the uh, in, in the hull of a ship. But again, that's what looks like the Titanic though. So maybe. Maybe that's what G-Pride can do next game, sink the Titanic. I don't know, stick with me, Nemecast. We'll find out, coming out very, very shortly.